everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. The stakes have been raised here in the wild card round as it's time to win or get an early start on the offseason. It's the Steelers going up against the Chiefs. The fans are bundled up. It's a cold one at Arrowhead Stadium. As we send you out to Kansas City, hook up with our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, thank you very much. The snow and the cold, it has not deterred the KC faithful. The parking lot was full early. The barbecue smoker's going, and we are about set for football here on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we pull the curtain on the postseason with an AFC wild card matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the postseason on EA Sports. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, that's really all I need to say to get you fired up. It's the postseason on EA Sports. And no one's more fired up than the guys who are going to be playing in this game. This is what they fought for all year long. Go back to the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp, throughout the season to get to the playoffs. The intensity level will be off the charts. What twists and turns will January have in store for us? The NFL playoffs are officially underway. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. here on first down. And he's taken down. A chief sack. Darren Lee coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. to him right up the gun. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. And they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down. Brandon, with the last couple of plays for the offense not being good at all, my thought process as a coordinator, get the ball in the hands of my best player and see if I can salvage anything out of this draft. Out of the gun now on third down. The pressure from his right and he goes down hard. Flat on his back. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. The Steelers send out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. He'll send this one into the Midwestern air, and it's a good one. Fielded at the 20. A good return there, 17 yards. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. So here are the Chiefs now coming out for their opening drive. And let out by their veteran quarterback. He's been around a while. They don't celebrate birthdays for him. They just cut him up, see how many rings he's got around the middle. He has been in the league a long time. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. Second down following the run. And 
And they'll go with a ground attack here. And three yards there takes him to the 45. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Give it to him right up the gun. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. Now a handoff here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Surveying the field. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Shotgun. He'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They get nine yards there, and they get a first down. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add a little extra in the end with a short run. And to give this time to the tailback. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain, and it's second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. What a tremendous play by the defensive line. Instead of getting too far upfield against the draw, able to hold their spot and make a big play in the backfield. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here we go now. Blue, They'll give it to him right up the gun. Yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they cover things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. 
and you're not allowed to climb, you got a free hitter. And that's what we saw there. And a really nice play resulted for them. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver from eight yards out. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting Pater. Here's the Chiefs kickoff unit now as they'll send this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. We put our attention now on the Chiefs' defense. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They say, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. And a quick throw here. That's complete. The completion good for three and it's second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Here we go with second and seven. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He lost two there, and it's third down. But we just saw the recipe for success right there. Big body, strong, agile, playing with great leverage and hands. Not really able to be blocked on that play. Close things down inside. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. This is taken at about the 14. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now here comes Kansas City. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Throwing left side, it's complete. It's a gain of 24 that time. And that'll be good for a KC first down. And in this weather, and I know you weren't a quarterback, you were on the defensive side of things, but how hard is it to throw that football? It can't be easy because you never know how the moisture is going to affect things, and each quarterback handles it differently. Some of them are a little bit better than others. Depends on whether we wear a glove, not wear a glove. How cold is it? You know, all those things go into it. But it goes to everything else. Keeping your footing when you're running routes. Supposedly, you have the advantage as a receiver because you know where you're going. But that's not easy as well. Finally, just locating the ball when it finally comes through the snow. Kids love it. Kids love snow. Players, not so much at times. Here we go now. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but 
for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. They run the counter now on first down, and he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. They'll set up a throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The Steelers send out their punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this punt goes out of bounds and it'll be marked inside the 40. And now here comes Kansas City. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And they'll run it here. Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. A bullet throw but incomplete. Here's the Chiefs punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is taken at the 18. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. 
In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run, probing now early to try and get things done later. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I know from an offensive perspective, you want every play to be a big play. But sometimes the defense actually wins, and they did there on that draw play. Good job by the runner just taking care of the football because he didn't want to compound a bad play by turning it over. So we hit the corner break in round one of the AFC playoffs. 7-0 is our score, and we're back to Arrowhead after this. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Chiefs now getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Hey, 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 hey. Here we go now. Green, 39. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Quick hitter here. It's complete. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Set up to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32. Brought down there. Here's the Chiefs punter now. As he'll come on to kick this one away. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. Ball may come your way. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game. And that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. A group of Chiefs there to make the stop that time. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. He'll drop to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And they're just a couple of yards shy of a first down here on third down. Now a handoff looking right. A beautiful spin and room to run. He got 29 yards that time. Well, I'd have to say in that situation, they're lined up for a running play. It's only third and two. Some element of the pass, but that was really well blocked. Probably call those gravy plays, right, if you're the offensive coordinator? No doubt about it. All you're trying to do is get the two yards necessary for a first down. Then you look up, you've got a whole lot more than that. Yeah, they did. They got a lot more than that, indeed. They go play action here on first down. 
And his throw here is incomplete. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Well, the great coaches said football is really a simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush one, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. And the Chiefs showing a dime look as they defend this third down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's got time. He's going to float this one deep. It's caught at the 10. It's a big play there for the Steelers. And even 50 yards. Well, they just treated third and long as simply an opportunity to make an even bigger play. Normally, you're just trying to pick up the first down, and you know where the sticks are. They took this thing way downfield. Confidence in the receivers to go up and make a play, even with defenders around them. And now a first down following that long game. Now a handoff here to his running back. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stock troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Hang on now, three, 19. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A great effort there, taking it in from seven yards away. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so something well. else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Let's go! 319! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Finding time. Going right side here, and that's complete. And blocked down, but not before reaching the 45 yard line. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. They'll come out in the pistol. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. Now out of the gun, and he is going to lose yardage 
yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. That draw play got blown up by the blitz of the defense. Ordinarily, that's exactly what you want. You want them to blitz and they go past you and you go past them for a big game. But in this situation, and the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Steelers. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That'll go as a loss of five. And it'll be third and 10 now. That play never got off the ground because of the defensive front. They owned the offensive line, which allowed the linebackers to see their openings and run straight to the ball. That's why that play just never had a chance. He'll look to throw. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Fresh set of downs here. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. He's got time in the pocket. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. game here with a tailback and yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage but that's it no gain on that one and it's going to bring up a third down so nothing there i don't know that that's all in the back though you got to look at blocking there don't you i would agree with that totally at some point they have to win at the point of attack instead it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain out of the gun now on third down and incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now the Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. Here we go now. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. 
And let's not take for granted, in these conditions, that's never an easy pass and catch. You really got to find a way to drive the ball. You know, get your grip. You know, that's why we see some of the guys now that put the gloves on when they when they throw the ball in this type of a condition. Sometimes the glove might make it too slippery. So you got to figure out what's going to work for you. But how about the receivers? Looking back and trying to locate the ball coming through snow and making sure they have full concentration. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. On play action, they'll throw, surveying the field. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's the Chiefs punter now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Chiefs defense making their way back onto the field. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt or Maybe you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. 12 yards on the pickup, and the Steelers are going to have a first down. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. Back with more AFC playoff action after this timeout. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Larry Ridley at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. They'll look to throw now on first down. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. Give them 11 on the game there. And it'll give the Steelers a first down. And they're going to speed things up here. They'll drop the throw. Wide open receiver complete. It'll go as a gain of 12. And that'll be good for a Pittsburgh first. First down, he'll drop to throw it. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. to throw again and he just throws this one away smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down but that's the type of pass play that you need to wait for routes to develop you need a little time in the pocket and that's hard to do when you got people in your face back to throw now on second and ten throwing for his running back and he's got him complete now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. 
Well, they've got it down to the three, but now this is third and goal. Again, he'll drop the throw. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver from three yards out. And the Steelers have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now we get a look at the captain of this offense heading back out there now. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he powers his way up past the 30. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Hey, four down, four down. Now let's go. Three, 19. Three, 19. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll be fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Here's the Chiefs punter now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He'll send this one into the Midwestern air, and it's a good one. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. So we're at halftime of this AFC Wild Card matchup as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Chiefs have controlled the flow, but it hasn't given them a big advantage. The Steelers won't care how much their offense is on the field as long as they find a way to advance in these playoffs. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Chiefs have it midway through the first. Completion will be made here to a wide open man. And that connection will lead to a gain of 24 yards. Continuing on the drive, coverage breaks down here. And now they get in for the touchdown. The Chiefs strike first in this one. We go now to early in the second. Here the pass will be completed into coverage. And the play will come to an end after a gain of 50. Steelers now later on the drive. He'll cut it out right on the outside run. He caps off the seventh play drive with a score. The Steelers tied up at seven. Now to late in the first half. Middle of the field, the pass will be caught. And it's caught for the score. That puts them up by a touchdown. So that's all for us here at the EA Sports Studio.